Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode here on the Hermitcraft Mesa Fight server and it is episode 501 which means that the last episode was our milestone 500th episode of Hermitcraft can you believe it what a number to reach and as of right now I have not even seen your feedback on the last episode because at the time that I'm recording this one the last episode hasn't even gone out yet and it feels really strange to record number 501 without talking about your feedback on episode 500 but I do hope you all enjoyed it I put so much effort into you know all of the editing that you would have seen in that video if you haven't seen it go back and watch it because it's a special it's something very different from normal and that is why the last few episodes of Hermitcraft have been a bit spaced out there hasn't been a much of it as much of it recently if I could talk properly and that's because I've been preparing for recording episode 500 and all of that actually went pretty smoothly and I was very happy with the end results so hope you all enjoyed it if you haven't seen Evil X before there are other episodes with him I'm gonna make a little playlist for you and put it in the description box if you fancy checking out the other two episodes including 500 so free in total where Evil X was featured and then you can find it down there so what are we doing right now? Where are we walking? What is this mysterious place that I am not talking about? This is actually our tunnel to the Logfellas headquarters. It's something I've been working on in a live stream so far. And I know some of you aren't too keen on me doing stuff in streams and not in the episodes. But, you know, there'll be a point where I come to this project in an episode and finish building it. I don't know when that'll be. It might even be today, but I've sort of already got other plans. So, anyway, Ren built this tunnel over on this side. This is all his work going up to this point and then when it came to me building my tunnel on the other side it just sort of made sense we had a little bit of a vote about it it made so much sense to just copy his design and continue it up to my end because otherwise we'd have some sort of like contrasting design and I think the continuity of this is what makes it work so anyway we can both get to this point right here and then we're probably gonna have another rail that goes down here a bit and then it's gonna lead to the entrance of the log feathers bit so lots of stuff being built and done in the background and I do just want to chat to you a little bit at the beginning of this video I get ghost blocks on this server <laughs> as well as a lot of questions about when I stream um, you know what's going on on Twitch because a lot of you have been tuning in and watching me stream a lot of you like it and are becoming curious about it and so I thought I'd just go over how the whole streaming thing works basically I stream on Twitch every other day and for this month, it's going to be on odd days that I'm streaming. If it is a weekday, then it'll be in the evening. If it's a weekend, it'll be in the morning. And of course, that's in my time zone. If you go to the Twitch page and just scroll down, there is tons of information and time zone information as well. So you can find out when I'm streaming if you want to watch it. And all of my streams are uploaded to the second channel. I still get questions about, you know, when are you going to upload your stream? It's, it's on the second channel. I just want to make that very clear. And there's other content that I upload there as well. Basically bonus stuff like follow up to videos. And I did a snapshot review on one of the snapshots that had, you know, very little to talk about. I didn't feel like putting that on the main channel just because there was so little to talk about. And also I did an episode 498.5, a sort of mini prank episode on the second channel as well. So if you want to subscribe to it, there's like extra content and live stream stuff as well. Thought I'd just mention that at the beginning of this video. So as well as doing this tunnel, we've also been working on a translocator elevator over here, which is kind of finished apart from the bottom bit. If you haven't seen one of these before, they're very noisy. And they're very fast and it takes me all the way back up here which is cool and then to get down we've got this little water drop as well and as well as that having this amazing little elevator to get up we're also expanding our little what do you call it over here I don't know it's like our secret entrance bit we press the button on the wall then we can walk through the back here and go down to other places and someone pointed out in one of the streams when we were working on this that having these like one wide corridors aren't very pretty and at the time I was just sort of squeezing it in behind other walls and now going down here we've got this not particularly interesting path uh, but it goes all the way down to the tunnel, which I haven't quite finished, and it goes down here as well. There is actually a bone mill farm that I've had for quite some time and forgotten about, so one of my projects is to hook it up. And when I was over here, I saw a creeper, and I kind of panicked and threw my pick at it, which was really unfortunate. But anyway, that's sort of all done with now. How many bones did we get? Not a lot while we were down here working on this thing. Uh, but anyway, for this episode, we are going to be working on other things, not this tunnel or... Uh, bone farm at our base and what we're going to do first of all is head over to the brown district 
So we are over here to do some maintenance work because Mumbo has opened a TNT shop and for some of us this is slightly alarming. The destructive power of this shop if something bad were to happen is quite alarming and it was just the other day as well that I was inside this area here which I do believe is fully lit up. A creeper just somehow, I don't know, was in here. I walked into it and a little bit of it got blown up. I actually repaired all of that though. So you never know when a creeper is going to be around. Although this area has been lit up, this is Minecraft. Do you know what creepers are like? Creepers be creeping. And, uh... Oh! No! Oh! You've got to be kidding me! You've got to be kidding me! Oh no! Oh no, I am I am a terrible actor, aren't I? No, that, that probably didn't sound genuine in the slightest, and don't worry. Wow. <laughs> the destructive power of Mumbo's shop. This is a test. I am trying to find out just how much damage this could potentially do. And it's a lot. You know, no one wants to go around repairing this. Looks like the secret sapling society has been compromised as well. Tango's shot has been hit. Cub fans, Dragon Head, and the Elytra shop up there have been completely decimated. The destructive power of this shop is immense. And uh, that's why we're going to correct that and replace some of the TNT with some redstone clay. So we're back on the actual server right now. Rendog just logged out. There you go. There's my proof that we are on Hermitcraft. And it was thundering. And I don't think thunder strikes in the Mesa Biome the same way it doesn't rain. But I saw the sky light up and it made me wonder. First of all, if lightning strikes did happen here, it could hit the shop. Probably very slim chance of that happening. But also mob spawning conditions are different during a thunderstorm. And even though these areas are lit up, if it's thundering, I do believe it means they can potentially spawn. I forget the numbers. I forget all the details over time. But there's something going on there. Anyway, we want to make this place a lot safer. That's why I brought some red stained clay with me. So I'm just going to go through here, punching out all of the TNT and replacing it with a red stained clay. And that way we'll avoid any potential disasters. Well, it's all done now. I've removed the TNT and returned it to Mumbo in one of the chests on the inside. And I've got to say, this shop has lost its pizzazz. I feel kind of bad. It doesn't look anywhere near as good as it did before. But you saw the destructive power of this thing. I mean, it's so easy. This is Minecraft. You get creeping all the time. It happens. And it will happen around here one day, I'm sure. Um, so hopefully a crisis averted there. And yeah, it happened to me just the other day wandering into here. I sort of went back in here and had a little head scratch. And I believe some of the mobs can spawn up the top here on top of these stairs. So the creeper must have like wandered over to the edge, fallen down, and then bumped into me. Which gave me a sad face. I had to rebuild a part of the inside there. Uh, but a creeper blast on its own it isn't so bad. But next to a massive block of TNT, it's pretty disastrous. Anyway, um, we're going to do something. We're going to stock up the expo next. Because man, these... Like we built this. This is the first shop that we built. And they have been flying off the shelves ever since. I thought this was going to be a one-time thing. Everyone gets their expo, and that's it. So over in this chest, we've sold three of the regular expos, which are eight each now. And the flybos are just going off the shelves. We actually made a couple extra of these in a stream and put them in here, and they were just gone the next day. And again, I think it's because some hermits have been dying a lot, and they love their flybos and their expo, and they want to come back here and get them again. So we're going to have to make some more of those. How many diamonds was that? 48. I do like it. And I think the way that we're going to do that is um, by doing some enchanting now, because I haven't been doing a lot of AFK fish farming, which means we haven't been getting more bows and books. So I think we're going to head over to the end and see how this works for making those bows with a little bit of enchanting. So I've been doing a fair bit of enchanting over here and one of the things we can't get on the bows is mending but we do have plenty back at base that we could use. So all of these have been done at level 30. These ones over on this side are pretty much junk to me and you might think that's a good enchantment but I don't like having punch 2 on my regular uh, expo. This is the equivalent of an expo. <laughs> and the reason why is because you have knockback on your sword. I just like the idea of you know those two being different and then we save punch two for the fly bows. So in terms of getting a decent enchantment for the fly bow, this is really what I'm after. Basically infinity we do get punch two. In fact often when we get punch two it's with a power four. But infinity by itself or with unbreaking is really great. So that plus punch two, um, that right there is a fly bow isn't it? So 
Oh no, it also needs mending as well, but yeah, um, you see what I'm getting at. So then, for all of these ones over here, they're good for making um, expos, but you also need to get like the flame enchantment as well. So a few of these have infinity, they'll be worth taking back, but a lot of these are probably actually just going to get scrapped, you know, because we end up with loads and loads of these, and these ones will all get scrapped here. So from this, I think we're only going to be able to make a couple of each type of bow, so I don't think enchanting is really the way to go with these things. Well, that was very beneficial to the regular expo. We've got loads of these now. Let's have a look. Ten in total, I think. And you know what I normally like to do? I like to have one of these for each bow. And there's ten in there now. But the price is on the front, so it shouldn't be confusing. And then the fly bow, we've only got one. The problem here is usually when you get yourself like a punch two, it comes along with power. And you don't want to have those two together because then you're going to do damage to yourself. And sometimes with flame as well, you don't really want to set yourself on fire when you're flying so we've got less of them which means that I've probably got to do some fishing anyway I've got some diamonds and I haven't seen Joe Hills around a lot lately as you can see I'm down to my last two pork chops you know I buy these like in bulk I buy like eight stacks of meat at once and then a week or two goes by and I need to buy some more because obviously you get for a lot of food in this game so let's have a look over here um, no nothing there and I've walked into the wrong shop <laughs> that's not a good thing to do let's go oh my god Joe has stocked up everything that is amazing I am just gonna take a big big stock of this right here all of those diamonds for you Joe thank you okay back at the passive mob farm and I gotta say I love how that looks over there a water mountain strange stuff right and I get over here and I think, do you know what I forgot them to bring? My haste beacon. Well, I'm not going to stress about it. There's probably a whole bunch of things we're going to need to take a trip back for. So I'll go and get that later on. And you may notice that something's changed down here, apart from me putting in these portals for the next part of the farm. All of the obsidian and lava that was here is gone. <laughs> and it's been replaced with sand, which is now down at the bedrock level. Got lots of comments about this. You guys should know that I knew that, but me being me, I would forget that filling in lava with sand is a really good way of getting rid of it. And that was a huge time saver. So thank you to all of you for reminding me about that. I spent a little bit of time over here just putting in the sand, getting rid of the obsidian and the lava, and it just made things so much quicker and easier. And so that's why we got obsidian sorry, got sand down here in the floor now, but that's been taken care of, so we don't have to worry about it, and we kind of missed a trick here, because we recently learned how to break bedrock with dragon eggs, and what we could have done, as many of you pointed out, is lower this entire farm a few more blocks down by removing the bedrock, and then we could have increased the efficiency of this farm by having an extra layer. Now that I've done this much, and considering how much time it would take to actually pull that off and get rid of all the bedrock, I think I'm going to leave it be. I don't mind missing out on that opportunity because this thing is going to be great anyway when we get it up and running and we're talking about splitting hairs here. Oh yeah, and the slab right here shouldn't actually really be a problem. Lots of suggestions to use signs or upside down trapdoors instead. Here's the thing, we're mainly doing this for horses and horses are 1.4 tall so they can spawn under the slab but they also won't spawn here because they're a little bit bigger than a regular block so when they spawn in this space they won't be affected by the slab that means that thing by me is okay to stay anyway I want to make some modifications to this thing the plan is to you know build another two sections of this but let me go grab some materials and we'll make a little modification alright so I got a comment saying that this glass wouldn't look too good for other players of course we got our own texture pack so it makes things look a little bit nicer with this, but for other players they're going to have all the streaks in the glass and we'll probably be better off using something like this. So I'm actually going to replace all of the glass we've already put into this thing and replace it with the white stained glass. And I think there's only one bit where this is going to get a little bit tricky and that's where we do some of this down the side here. I've got to replace, what key is it on my, there you go, 7. So I've got to replace and I'm also standing, well that... <laughs> That was terrible. Okay, so it's a good thing that I did that first over here. My plan was to jump and press 7, but it looked like the water hit me first of all. Yes, we've got to replace those ones down the side, and that can become especially annoying when it's right next to redstone. So I've got to be very careful with removing and replacing a lot of this stuff. But yeah, I think it will look better in the long run anyway. I can do this, by the way. Let's do it properly. So, seven right click, bam, before the water even knows what's going on, <laughs> the uh, glass block has been placed. Well, that took longer than expected. It's all done now. Thank goodness for that haste beacon. That makes a huge difference when mining this glass. 
I was just sort of wondering, you know, things have changed in over time in this game. There was a time, I think, when you could break glass with a pick, and if it had efficiency 5, it would instant mine. Man, I really wish we could still do that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you can see this bit of the farm is coming along as well. And we're sort of building this a little bit different from how I did it before. So I should probably focus on getting in the pistons and the water next, as they might be a bit more tricky once all of this is in. But I doubt I can even build all of these floors. Believe it or not, I'm out of dirt. And I was thinking to myself, I spent such a long time digging through this area. How have I got no dirt left? And then I remember that I gave a whole bunch of it to False as payment for her helping us with our building in the brown district. So it looks like I might have to go and do some more digging to get some more dirt at some point. So I've made a modification to how the redstone works and it's actually quite convenient. You see our signal comes all the way down to the end here. And can it go one further? It can't, but we just updated it. That's not powered, we just updated the piston by placing it there. Which is kind of interesting because it didn't power the block yet. An update made its way down below. I don't know. Anyway, here's the change. We used to have a repeater in the middle. And what I decided to do for this gap is put three repeaters in a row to add a delay. And of course, this piston's bud powered by the redstone here. So it actually works out really well. Just so happens that the distance is just right that you don't need... Uh, an extra repeater in the middle which is really cool. Now the other cool thing about this is that we're probably going to need a bigger delay than three repeaters and now we can quite easily just have a block here, have some repeaters going that direction, go across and come back and then continue along because we do want some more delay in here. We want the water to go all the way out to the ends, then the next one, then the one after that and then when there's been enough time for the animals to go all the way to the end it will retract and basically everything in the farm needs to work one by one and by having you know, those repeaters there laid out like that. We can expand upon it and it works out very conveniently. Hopefully that made sense. Here's how I'm doing with the rest of the farm. Um, it's slowly coming along. I'm just building the same old thing that you've seen me do in the episode we last worked on this. But as of right now, sort of low on resources. Got to go back to base, craft some more pistons, find somewhere to get some dirt and grass from and then finish this thing off, I hope. It'll never go that smoothly, will it? There'll always be something. There'll be another reason for just one more trip. <laughs> uh, didn't have enough glass for me to finish this off. Got plenty more back at the base, though. And I don't think you technically need to go there, do you? You can go there instead. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so i got to come back here and do another round to finish this off. And then the whole thing is sort of going to be ready to be configured and set up and get going. Still got to remove those chickens from the spawn chunks though, because absolutely nothing has spawned in here yet, which is slightly worrying. Uh, but as of now, I think we've worked on this for enough this episode, so we're going to hop over somewhere else and work on something else for a bit. And also glitch into a ladder. So, I've kind of like walked into a little bit of a project here, been dawdling around in the base wondering what to do. One little thing I did do is add crafting benches. How easy are they to access? That's actually not so bad. A little bit of focus, look and aim. It'd be nicer if they were a little bit more obvious. Could probably put something behind the chest as well. Anyway, put crafting benches underneath them. Just went round the back here. And I've been thinking maybe we should fill in the back. But on the one side, there are some rails in the way. So just making little tweaks around this area. You know, One of the things we did is tidy up all the chests that used to be here. You can see that the water and the brewing stand is still there. I'm thinking this area might become a, uh, a brewery at some point. But I still I want to build my little tower on the other side. I've sort of fallen out of my building groove at the moment. Which is why we haven't been doing too much here. And that means that I'd want to connect it to this room. And so it's all been going a little bit slow in the base. But down below I have got... A little bit of inspiration just to do some nice simple interiors, mess around with some materials again. Uh, down here I've changed this to orange which I think looks much much nicer. Then we have a ladder to go all the way down here and you can see it goes down a very long way. So to get back up you got the ladder, to go down you have the drop on this side that goes into water. 
and this goes down to the bone mill farm. What happened there? Did I jump back up or something? And I was just looking at this and I thought, do you know what, you can make a little bit of a room here, dig this out and make it look a little bit more interesting to come here and AFK. In fact, making an AFK spot as well, making this safe, there's been a couple of creepers around here and uh, we need to like light the place up. So I'm going to do some digging down here and make this look a little bit more interesting. And what is the other thing that we need to do? It is to climb back up the ladder. And it actually takes uh, a really long time to get back up this, which gave me another idea, believe it or not. So the translocator elevator that we have here is a great way of getting up, but we are actually at Y63. That is where this tunnel is. The mesa does go quite above the sea level, so the bone mill farm is really far down below. And I would like to extend this translocator elevator downwards. The thing is, I haven't built one of these where you can sort of walk on halfway up because we would need this to be a piston and then we'd need to activate it from that point, which could be a little bit tricky. But I'm confident we can find a way. Now the problem is that this bit right here I'm going to say is where this bit intersects what could be, you know, a whole string of torches heading up for this thing to work and it's powered on by default and turning this off by default which could be a little bit of a problem because you want to be able to change that midway up but I do believe it might be possible so I think what we should do next is a little bit of an experiment and see if we can wire it up that way and then that would mean with the press of a button you could walk into it press the button wherever it is it would probably be like on the side somewhere and then you could go up from this point there wouldn't be any pressure plate here and you could go up from down below as well and there's just one more thing for me to check, which is the location of this, because it could be that this is directly above the bone mill farm. That might be a little bit of a problem, actually. So it's early morning for me right now. I may have a little bit of morning voice, and morning sometimes can be a bad time to do redstone. Check this out. So I press the button there. Do you see what happens with the torches over here? The one at the top doesn't change, and that's because it seems to change the bottom two and then it just decides that it wants to stop and this has been giving me a nightmare, I've been scratching my head this is sort of like a recreation uh, or adjustment I guess you could say of the original redstone with this block right here above the uh, yeah the, <laughs> the redstone wire I've realized though this makes the whole contraption fire twice that's actually an important part of it because it seems to like lag out a little bit and then this second wave of the pistons firing sort of gets you up to the top. So let's actually go up to the top and you might see what I mean. No, that time we went all the way up. Sometimes you sort of get stuck halfway through and then all of a sudden you go again and that's because of that second wave. But anyway, as you can see, I've made this work and what I've like sort of learned here is that redstone is funky. We already knew that. If you change this though to a repeater and put it on the second setting, um, then the like the torches go all the way to the top but they don't go fast enough which is really odd and it turns out what you have gotta do is use no repeaters at all so in order to get this signal around to here and to have this one behave properly I've had to run it through one, two, three different redstone torches which is seemingly unnecessary as I say it did I just try going straight from there to there I'm not sure that I did that might work as well let's pay attention to the torches Press the button over here. Oh, okay. I may have just simplified the whole thing a little bit more. <laughs> it's funny how these things work. No. Yes. <laughs> okay, I took a little bit of damage. That's strange because a piston shouldn't be able to damage the player. You don't suffocate inside the block. Why did I take damage? And this time I come all the way straight up. And seemingly I got up there faster as well. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes I think you fail midway through this thing and then the second wave like picks you up again, but it's kind of hard to tell. Um, either way, I think we did just compact that. So, we found a way to add like a, uh, what would you call it, like a, a midway, a multi-floor sort of system to this, because you can come over here, you can press that button, and because it's going to target a block that isn't powered, this one right here, it means you could technically put this at other heights as well and then have it as a multi-floor translocator elevator which is fantastic <laughs> I really like that um, yeah so anyway we just got to extend this all the way down to the bottom now I've fallen into a hole <laughs> right as I start recording I've fallen into a hole so this thing works it is in place let's go and ride it and I do like these elevators but it takes such a long time to build one of these so we walk forward we stand here and we go all the way up if we look to there you go you saw it <laughs> to that side you can see the halfway point 
and it takes us up to the top which is fantastic so if we drop down to this bit I had to rewire this a little bit had to use a piston because this was bub powered and then if we didn't use this piston it would sort of break I don't really need to go into the details do I? I've just been fixing it as I go along so that's the entrance here now it also lines up with this at the other side of the room and if we drop down here we go to the area down below now this has unfortunately sort of positioned itself right above here which means it isn't too great for having a entrance you know the the best place for it to be would be right in the middle over here and you just walk straight into it but what we'll probably do is have a staircase in the middle of this area that then goes up to the side and into the translocator elevator the moment it's a little bit high because this thing actually starts quite high up if we go down by a block you can see I've put in just a couple of extra pistons here to show you where it would actually go to so I think it is just above there there would be a piston then another one here and what we can't do is bring it down by one piston it has to be two because of the way that the torches that power all of these sort of alternate back and forth so that means this would be the floor and the reason I didn't do this before is because we need a piston directly underneath the floor then we need blocks below that as well but I could actually wire this up differently like I did the other one and maybe just above the top here we're able to squeeze in the right sort of redstone so then we would be operating from this height right here and it just means that there's a little bit of a shorter walk to get to the translocator elevator and I'm sort of like nitpicking a little bit with this stuff but you know you don't want to have a nice fancy elevator to get you up to the top quick but you've also got to walk through this big stairwell to get there you know it doesn't really make sense does it so it's one of those things that we definitely want to look at changing so ladies and gentlemen it has been busy times for me and I wanted to do so much more so much more check this out though um, yeah I found a way to sort of wire this up it may not be the most compact thing but it's basically doing the same thing and the redstone has been elongated <laughs> made longer made further apart to give us the sort of room that we need to not have you know this piston getting bub pad by this and for us to not have to go down down below and break the red clay it also gives us a little bit of flexibility with uh, when we're going to be designing this room I'm actually really looking forward to doing this I'm in that mood for interiors because one thing I think would look nice is that you can see the top of these blocks right here and we can actually place whatever material we want across the back here which was an important part of doing the redstone so we can make the room look nice and we have options and all that cool stuff and this works let's use it what Oh, okay, yeah, 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 I see what's wrong. I broke the redstone here. For a moment there, I was like, what have I done? It's all gone horribly wrong. Um, actually, it's quite simple. Where I've now added a block here, we have broken the redstone there, and that is all that it needs. And now we go all the way to the top. Let's look to the side if we can. There it is. There's a little entrance through. And now we're at the top, and it kind of hiccuped a little bit there at the end. And you know what, peeps? That is going to be it for today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. Like I just said a moment ago, Busy, busy times for me. You will all find out soon what has been going on. I cannot wait to tell you, um, but it does mean I have a little bit less time than usual to play these episodes. So I wanted to do more, and we ended up doing a load of redstone and not a lot of buildings. So we'll do some building down there soon. Don't you worry about it. Anyway, thank you as always. If you enjoyed the video, please do leave a like. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.